monster kids, fiends, come with me. Come with me down to the cemetery. I'm going to be talking about a new band tonight. Oh yeah. The scene is not all about the old shit. Let's rock some new shit. Tonight on the Midnight Chamber, we're talking about the antibodies. <laughs> Fucking antibodies from, I believe Virginia is where they're from. Just absolutely killer. Um, female fronted. I mean, I really hate using that term, uh, but it's got a girl vocalist, which makes it female fronted. Uh, but they're just a killer fucking horror punk band. Uh, kind of formed in 2011. Okay, Jeze Disaster and Izzy Deadly, the two main people behind the band. Uh, they kind of they, they were they got together at the Tim Hortons sometime 2011. Were mulling around the idea, kicking it over that it'd be cool and kind of funny to start like a, some kind of musical outfit. And it started off as essentially uh, acoustic guitar and jazz singing. And, uh, yeah, they started off with Nirvana and Misfits tunes, graduated up slowly to, uh, like, all Misfits cover sets, and they called themselves the Mutant Suicide Squad. Yeah, we couldn't, we could see exactly where this was going. Um, let's see, the, ori the original idea was to eventually play originals. So uh, Izzy slowly like started showing jazz like uh, you know some horror punk and horror rock songs more whatever that he had written for some previous bands. Well needless to say they're pretty fucking cool. Um, so that you know like any good band that just slowly ramps up you know, he brought in about five songs and that led to some collabs and that slowly led them into finding a bass player and a drummer and then they would get together a couple times a week put ideas together and it just knock out two three ideas a week or every couple weeks and then they just picked the best of those songs and Went into the studio, um, maybe three, four songs at a time, knock those out. Um, they put some singles out on Bandcamp first. Uh, so by 2013, I mean, this was pretty fast between mid-2011 and 2013, they went from no band to bam, studio, drop the record, self-titled. Uh, though they do refer to the original non was it the, uh, the non-labeled version as the classic uh, the classic trap version because they used the Ghostbusters like ghost trap on a lot of that stuff so that's pretty cool and 2012 is about when they came up with the, uh, the antibodies name as well but you know I'm, I'm like we haven't even looked at the fucking release, and I'm already through the history. Let's stop right here and take a look at the album. Fairly simple, just a nice digi pack. We'll be back. All right, check out this freaking artwork. Uh, I, <laughs> digi packs are apparently really cheap to produce now because everybody produces digi packs. But the artwork wraps clear around. Pretty stinking cool. I love the hand-drawn stuff. That picture actually reminds me a lot of the old Sudsy Malone's and Elbows shows here in Ohio. Totally got to give a shout out to Dylan Vanard. Um, he did the artwork for this. 
he did a killer job too. There's everyone who worked on the record. A little shout out action. Pretty cool. The antibodies, man. Check that shit out. They're super fucking cool. Super good. It's a good looking release, isn't it? I think it's a good looking release. So, uh, the album came out and uh, they met a guy named Mark Marin from RTTB Records and he kind of helped them get things set up and then that's like later introduced them to uh, Outlet what is it? Out Loud Records yes Out Loud Records which oddly is it's it's owned by this uh, the guy the lead singer of the Bones uh, his name is slipping my mind but he owns that they're a pretty cool horror punk band as well and uh they put out a, this version of the album and they press it as needed. Like they'll do X amount of presses, probably, you know, 100 or 200 at a time. Let those sell. Um, I think they're getting down to the very, very last few. I think the band's out of records and Out Loud probably, I think, still has one or two. But it's, you can always buy the digital and I think. They're gonna do another pressing of this. I guess we'll find out when that happens. Maybe with different artwork, that'd be cool. Anyway. So, uh, anyway. Doug White recorded the record and it, the, the whole process was smooth and easy. And what you got was a fucking killer punk rock package of just horror punk anthems. Um, you can tell the influences, Ramones, Misfits, Queers, pretty much all the 90s Outlook bands, like Outlook Records. Um, It's a good bunch of songwriting. I mean, this the 
the good songwriting really shines through on this. Uh, it makes me really curious to see where they're going to go next. Like with the, the next full length. It's going to be a little while before the next full length comes out. But when it does, holy shit, is it probably going to be good. But you never know till it gets here. Um, and, and out loud released this Halloween of 2017. So it hasn't been out that long and it's almost sold out. You know, what, we're pushing about almost a year, 10 months, something like that. Damn, damned good. And uh, I mean, that's the history of the band up till now. They don't play out live very much. Uh, they kind of pulled back to almost just studio status. Um, but who knows what the future holds? They're not planning on stopping. Um, life, as usual, especially with a lot of the, like, well, all but like the five. Now, all of the fucking horror punk scene, except for maybe the Misfits, life gets in the way and, you know, things might ebb and flow. Not everyone's making a living off of this, so who knows when the next one's going to come out, um, and who knows when they're when or if they're going to play live anytime soon. But fuck, you know th this is brings up a nice, you know, because of shitty venues, and I mean not the venue itself, but like promoters, shitty promoters. Um, the pay-to-play bullshit. Um, I honestly think, like, streaming live shows, like, setting up at someone's house and streaming that shit live and letting your fans from wherever, you know, be at home and watch what you're playing, I think that, that really is going to be a, a good way to get, you know, out to some people. Maybe not all the time. I like to play in front of actual people, but that would be a cool thing to do. Just my two cents. Um, who knows? Whatever. Anyway, so my experiences with this record, uh, I'm thinking it was a discussion on the horror punk uh, Facebook group. I think it was somewhere in there. It might it, it, I, I believe it was one video that I posted. It might have been my video about um, Are the Misfits Ruining Horror Punk? That video. I, I loved that video for the simple fact that everyone got talking about their bands and everyone was just kicking links back and forth and everyone, like, you know, just whipping it out. I want to see more of that. More people sharing their own shit. You know? You know, we're a community. Let's fucking share our art, have really good discourse. And that was how I found out about the antibodies. I'm pretty sure Izzy fucking posted his shit. And, like, I took one listen and I was, like, head over heels with the fucking record. It's so catchy. I was really good to work out to, for that matter. And that's, that's the antibodies. I mean, it's... A young history but there it is kind of in a nutshell uh, when the next record comes out I'll most likely be covering that and I'll get you the skinny on exactly how that came into being because hey life is life and I'm sure there's gonna be all kinds of cool stories behind it so hey <laughs> documenting it as it comes out not everything has to be 15 20 30 years in the past with our scene. That's the here and now. So, yeah, fresh graves. Can you dig it? Hey, what can I say? I'm Gabriel. This is the Midnight Chamber. I'll catch you next time.